The fact that sand could be getting scarce is a weird sciencey fact sort of, that boggles my mind. Sand is one of Earth's most abundant resources. It can be found almost anywhere, from deserts to beaches to rivers to the panties of Trump supporters when you remind them that brown people exist. And that makes sense, because I mean, all sand is, is, is really small rocks. And if you're a man of science, you know that that is still not an appropriate substance to measure the weight of which is with. You, you need a duck. But okay, cool, whatever. Unless it's under your feet at the beach, why should you care about sand? Well, it turns out sand is the second most consumed natural resource on the planet after water. Water. And no, that's not because you got your kid that sandbox they played in once and then never used again. See, sand is a huge part of your everyday life. The screen that you're watching this on was made with sand. The microprocessors inside this device required sand to be made as well. Every window and every building, home, and car, well, that's sand again. But far and away, the biggest consumer of sand comes from concrete. See, sand is a main ingredient in concrete, and concrete is a main ingredient in cities. And since 1950, the global populations of urban areas has quadrupled to almost four and a half billion people. Which means we've needed a lot of sand to make a lot of concrete to make a lot of buildings to put those people in. And that is causing some problems. Because in some ways, we are running out of sand. Now that seems preposterous and ridiculous, right? And it is a little bit. I mean, obviously, we have deserts full of the stuff. We've got beaches full of the stuff. See, not all sand is the same. The sand in the Sahara is very different than the sand at Santa Monica. Desert sand is windswept instead of crushed by water, which makes it rounder and smoother. And all things being equal, if you use it in concrete, that concrete is less strong. Round grains of sand have less friction than jagged ones when they rub against each other, and friction is what helps hold concrete together. So jagged sand has long been the desirable industry standard, and that's often mined from rivers and waterways, and that sand is getting a lot harder to come by. And when I say it's getting scarce, it's like some serious shit. Like, there's sand wars going on, people are getting shot over illegally mining sand. Also, sand is getting mined in more and more places that are less and less environmentally friendly. And this scarcity of sand is going to have major consequences, both in the cost of building materials and in socioeconomic conditions around the world. But it turns out there may be more flexibility in concrete than you've been led to believe. The rule that you can't use round sand like what you would find in a desert isn't really a rule. And the fact that round sand makes concrete weaker is really more of a myth in many ways than a fact at all. So we all know that concrete comes in liquid form, and it's poured. Now concrete with jagged aggregate in it when it's not wet enough, like Ben Shapiro's wife, has a lot more friction. And like Ben Shapiro's wife, that makes it a lot more uncooperative to handle. So to fix that problem, you gotta add more water, you know, make it some wet-ass pavement. However, that has some consequences, because concrete doesn't dry when it hardens, it cures. It actually goes through a chemical reaction where it is reacting with that water, and parts of that water become part of the concrete. However, there's a perfect ratio of water for the maximum amount of strength, and if you add too much water, the concrete gets weaker. This is why I said all things being equal, jagged aggregate makes stronger concrete, but all things aren't equal. And round aggregate, with a little less friction on the front side, requires less water to be workable. Less water Water, stronger concrete. So it turns out that in a lot of situations where concrete needs to be workable to get it into position, round aggregate actually produces a better product. Great then, right? Problem solved. We'll just do the shit they do in Dune and harvest all the sand out of the desert. Well, not so fast. You see, the problem really isn't that there's a shortage of sand, because the world is still full of sand. The problem is, is that we are running out of sand in the places where we need sand. There's a whole host of reasons why concrete is such an abundant building material, but one of those reasons is that concrete is cheap, and concrete is generally cheap cheap because sand is cheap. In fact, really the only cost associated with sand at all is the cost of putting it on a truck and driving it from where the sand is to where it needs to be. But therein lies the problem, right? Because if the sand isn't close to the concrete plant and the concrete plant isn't close to the places that need concrete, that sand suddenly gets a lot less cheap. Because sand is fucking heavy and you need a lot of it to make a skyscraper. So the further you've got to move it, the more expensive it's going to get. So the reality is not so much that we're running out of sand. We're running out of cheap sand that's close to the place that we're building buildings. Sand from the Sahara might be a no-go for a lot of places, but not all hope is lost. We can make sand. All you gotta do is Hulk smash some rocks. Just, just hammer rocks and you get sand. We have the technology. But there again, you still need rocks, which are, you know, heavy. And then you have the added energy of smashing rocks to get sand, which is inconvenient when you're used to just scooping it up off of the ground and trucking it to a plant. That energy costs money, and that money would also make that sand more expensive. So unfortunately, all of our options going forward involve sand getting more expensive, which is going to make concrete more expensive, which is going to make our desperate need for more housing 
more expensive. But have faith because engineering is all about rising to challenges and solving problems. Particle board, for example, is what happened when they took something that used to be waste from milling lumber and turned it into an indispensable construction material. New architectural designs have figured out how to make stronger structures with less material. And a lot of things we build with concrete can be built with other materials. We just use concrete because it's cheaper and more convenient. Now, all of this is, of course, of little solace if you're shopping right now for a new condo or want to pour a pad for your new garage. But the point is that these obstacles can be overcome and there's a good possibility that we will create a better world in doing that. But the fact that the shape and size of sand is significant and the strength of its structures and we may soon have a shortage of sand that's a short stint from the cities that need it shipped for skyscrapers, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.